Open your Bibles with me to Psalm number 71. Psalm number 71. Mm -mm. <laughs> Psalm number 71, verse 17 and verse number 18. And I want to preach about the testimony of the elderly. Old people have something to say. testimony of the elderly. O oh God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me not. Until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. Thank you. You may be seated. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get to the text. Then you can. <laughs> oh, the spirit of the Lord is in this place. testimony of the elderly. We do not know for sure who wrote this psalm. There is no superscription over this psalm to make it a psalm of ascent or a psalm of degrees. Perhaps Samuel, in his old age, writes this psalm after his own children do not follow his good example. Or perhaps David is the author after being betrayed by Absalom and usurped by Adonijah. Perhaps he was inspired by Samuel himself who anointed him Israel's future king. Perhaps Jeremiah is the author of this psalm for he spent his last days in exile as an old man. But really it is immaterial who, who really wrote the psalm it is a song of old age. And it suits all those who are growing older in Christ, who find themselves as much beset by the difficulties and trials in life's later years as they were when they possess the full strength of their youth. The psalmist found himself approaching the last lap of his journey. He had spent his life, his strength in the service of God. And the psalmist pleads with God for strength to finish strong. Uh, he's coming to the end of his years. And as he heads towards the backstretch, he cannot afford any missteps. 
There's some mistakes you make in youth that you can recover from. But when you pass 50, you can't afford any missteps. I wish I had somebody to help me preach it. The older you get, the stronger you ought to get. I wish I had somebody to help me preach it. The older you get, the, 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 the closer your relationship ought be with the Lord because you don't have as much in front of you as you have behind you. The elderly, the aged, grandparents desperately need to feel secure. So often, their natural defenses against life's injuries are gone. You can't afford a fall. Uh, you could break a hip or, or injure a knee. They are retired from their employment. Their health is failing. Their siblings and their old friends are dying. Their minds are not as sharp as they used to be. Their income is greatly reduced. Often they feel defenseless and vulnerable and the people they raised sometimes don't come back to take care of them. My mother, who sleeps the long sleep of death, used to say nothing wrong with getting old. It's just so inconvenient. If it ain't one thing, it's another. You have to be over 50 to help me testify right here. If it's not your shoulder, it's your leg. If it's not your leg, it's your back. You get one child straight, another one starts acting a fool. Sometimes you have to take care of grandchildren when you ought to be really enjoying your sunset years. And then you have to take care of aging parents. Alzheimer's has set in and you are bathing them and taking care of them, feeding them, and they don't even know who you are. Because that's the way life is. If you live long enough, difficulties and trials will come with being old just like you had when you were young. Benjamin Disraeli, uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer and leader of the House of Commons and later serving two terms as Prime Minister of England under England's Queen Victoria, looked back over his life and he cried, youth is a mistake. Manhood is a struggle. Old age is a regret. Because he, has, he had wasted his life and come to the end of his years and found out that all of it was vanity. But not this psalmist. The psalmist says, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust? Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in your righteousness. Cause me to escape. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be thou my strong habitation. Whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast commanded me to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. You got to be old to talk like that. Uh, you have to have had some experiences with God in order to be able to testify that no matter what comes my way, in thee, O oh Lord, do I put my trust. You got to have gray hair to testify like that. I wish I had two or three witnesses here. You got to live a number of years and go through some battles and fight 
through some struggles and come through some difficulties and have God to hear and answer your prayers when it looks like no answer is about to come. It is then that you can testify in thee, O Lord. Do I put my trust? This day being grandparents' day. Don't ever be ashamed to count gray hairs. Don't ever be embarrassed that you're 55, 58, 67, 72, 81 years old. You ought to be able to testify. David said, I've been young. I wish I had two or three Bible readings. But now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed begging for bread. God will take care of you when your hair turns gray. Have I got a witness here? There is a sweetness. There is a beauty that God gives to the aged that you can't have in your youth because you don't have any experience. Uh, Maya Angelou in her book, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, uh, says that uh, youth is wasted on the young. Uh, young folk don't have any sense. Uh, Maya Angelou says, they, they think they know everything. 15 years old and they know everything but youth needs the experience of age age needs the vitality of youth and, and when you reach a certain amount of years you ought like the psalmist to ask God to do some things for you well God verse 17 thou hast taught me from my youth. Thou hast taught me. Thou hast instructed me. Thou hast showed me from my youth. Two men were in church giving their testimony. And one testified that he had been a drunkard and lived a profligate life. He'd spent his years in riotous living. Uh, he would fight and go to jail. Uh, he'd spent some time in jail. He, he'd sold drugs. He'd just been a fool all of his young adult life. And God saved him. And he testifies in this meeting of how God is able to save. And the next man stands to give his testimony. And he says, the brother who just testified before me, my testimony is not his. I've never been drunk. I've never been out in the world. I was raised in a Christian home. My mother rocked me to sleep singing, Jesus loves me, this I know. My father was a deacon in the church. I've never known anything but church. I don't have the testimony of my brother who was saved out of his riotous living. He's testifying about a God who can save. I'm testifying about a God who not only can save, but can keep you. And, and some of us were not raised in Christian homes. And God had to find us out there by ourselves. But somebody in here like me had a praying mother and father. Somebody who called your name in prayer. Ask God to bless you. And even when you went wrong, you heard your grandmother. Have I got a witness here? I'm here today because somebody prayed for me. Somebody asked God to bless me. And my testimony, my testimony is not only can God save you, but he can keep you. Uh, some of us ought to be dead this morning. I wish I had somebody to help me. Somebody in here should have been in jail today. But he looked beyond your faults. Have I got a witness here? 
That's why you ought to shout. That's why you ought to testify. That's why you ought to give God glory. Because what he kept you from. I don't, I don't only praise God for what he brought me to. I praise God for what he kept me from. I could have been dead. I wish I had some noise here. Sleeping in my grave. But God kept me when I didn't have sense enough to keep myself. He's testifying about the past. Uh, you've taught me from my youth. And I want to declare your wondrous works. But then he moves as a hurry to the present. He says in verse 18, Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, oh God, forsake me not. God gives something to the elderly that's not in young folk. He gives the elderly stability. Uh, he will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. Because when you get a certain age, you don't need much. See, when you're in your 20s and your 30s, you got to buy everything. And, and, and even though you can't afford it, uh, you go after it with a vengeance because you're trying to keep up with all them folk that you don't like and who don't like you. And, and so you buy things you don't need with money you don't have to impress folk you don't even like. But when you get a certain age, you don't care who likes you. You say what you want to say. Talk back to me if you can. You tell your children what you want to tell your children. You tell your grandchildren what you want to tell your grandchildren. You get up when you feel like getting up. You eat what you want to eat. You don't listen to nothing the doctor says. You don't listen to nothing your children say. They can't take your keys from you. They can't stop you from talking on the phone. Because when you get over 50 and 60, you do what the hell you want to do. This is my house. You don't like it? Somebody ought to help me preach it. <laughs> Listen. I'm 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 still I'm still scared of my mama in her grave. She's been dead 10 years and I still fear her because she said she would come back. And I believe she's crazy enough to come back. I wish I had somebody who was raised like I was raised. Grandparents have no business raising children unless you have to because you're too tired. You don't feel like correcting. And everything is funny when you're a grandparent. Now the stuff they do, they really need a spanking. But when you're a grandparent, you let them get away with it and then your children look at you like you're crazy. And say, mama, you wouldn't let us get away with that. You don't feel like fighting and whipping and chasing. It's the grandparents' job to spoil them and it's the children's job to raise them. I wish I had one or two more believers here. Um, I, I go 
from time to time as a grandparent, and I'm just as crazy as the rest of you grandparents. I buy all kind of stuff that Noel does not need because I'm a grandparent. And that's what grandparents do. So Victoria had the temerity, the unmitigated gall to say to me, Daddy, she needs some church shoes. I said, wait, 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 wait. I buy what I want. You buy what she needs with my money. I wish I had somebody to help me. I'm an accidental grandparent. I, I didn't want to be a grandparent. I'm too young to be a grandparent. But now that the baby's here, I'm crazy about the child. But I know I have no business raising her because I don't have the patience nor the inclination. Because when you get a certain age, your life starts to settle down because the scripture says, blessed is the man. I wish I had a Bible reader. That walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he doeth shall prosper. That's stability. And, and, and then God gives you when you're older a certain sagacity. Sagacity, that means wisdom. Now listen. Wisdom does not always come with age. Because you know, like I know, there are some old fools. <laughs> There's no more distasteful a sight than a woman in her 60s trying to dress like she's in her 30s. That's, that's not pretty. There's nothing more distasteful than an old man getting out of his place with young women. That's distasteful. You just like a dog chasing a car. When you catch up to it, you can't drive it. I wish I had time to stay right there. Age brings with it respect. Have I got a witness here? Folk respect you when your hair turns gray because there ought to be some wisdom that has accrued over the years. God, teach me your statute. Show me your commandments. I wish I had a witness here. Help me to walk in your ways. Keep my mind, keep my heart, keep my thoughts so that when I get old, I will be respected. Uh, and then, as I hurry, you want to stay young? I'm not talking about dyeing your hair. Because it don't make sense to have black hair <laughs> and your face look like shoe leather. You tore up from the floor. You look in your face and tell how old you are. Come on, help me preach if you can. 
You, you want to stay young? The Bible tells you how to stay young. It's right here in verse number 18. Until I have showed your strength under this generation. You want to stay young? Invest your life in some young person. As an old woman, tell these young women the truth. You ain't been in the mission all your life. You ain't been going to choir rehearsal and singing at church all your life. Tell these young women you made some mistakes. Have I got a witness here? You know how Crown Royal tastes. You know what Tangeray Gin tastes like. You know what Cavassier tastes like. You would just be coming in this time of morning from Friday night. Every once in a while you ought to look back, but don't go back. Look back from where the Lord brought you from, but don't go back there. Tell some young person, I've been there, I've done that, and there's nothing to it. You old men, tell these young men the truth. I wish they had some noise right here. Young men are for war. Old men are for counsel. Old man, you ought to tell some young man, I walked in your shoes. I made some of the same mistakes you're making right now. But God's been good to me. God was patient with me and he let me live long enough to overcome my mistakes. Have I got a witness here? I want to declare your wondrous works. I want to show your strength to this generation and your power to everybody who is to come. He talks about God's been good in his past. God is being good in the present. And then he wants to pass on what God has done for him to some future generation. I want to tell my young granddaughter that in 2012, I almost left here. But God came in my hospital room, put his hands on me, and I'm alive today to show you that God is a good God. I want to tell some future generation I made some mistakes that I'm not proud of. I wish I had somebody to be honest here. Somebody here ought to tell some young person, I did some stuff I'm ashamed to talk about. There's some decisions I wish I hadn't made. There's some stuff in my past I wish I could go back and undo. But God's been good to me. I wish I had one or two more witnesses here. Be honest enough to admit that you have always been what you are right now. But God was patient with you. And like the psalmist, he starts to testify about God's goodness. You really want to know how good God is? Read the book of Psalms. I wish I had one or two more witnesses. Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and says, Return, ye children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life for in the time 
of trouble he shall hide me the Lord is my shepherd come on you can help me say I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still water he restoreth my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake yea though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death hasn't God been good to us the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein I wish I had a witness here lift up your head O ye gates and be lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in the battle lift up your head lift up your head O ye gates and be lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the Lord of hosts he is the king of glory won't he keep you till your hair turns gray won't he open doors that will close in your face won't he make a way out of no way is there anybody here been walking with Jesus 30 or 40 years every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before why don't you grab somebody shake somebody's hand tell them I've been young but now I'm old and I never 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 I know he's all right I want to I want to finish strong I want my last days to be my best days. I want to live so that God can use me right down to my dying day. I, I don't want to make in the next 54 years the mistakes I made in the last 54 years. No, I want to live these last 54 years drama free. Crazy free. Foolishness free. Because there's some things you ought to be in your old age that you couldn't be in your young days because you didn't know any better. But thank God some old person came along and showed me the way. You want to stay young? Invest your life in some young person. And you will always be alive because what you put in them, they will pass on to future generations. I thank God for a praying, praying grandparent. I thank God for a praying mother and father. My daddy was a deacon at our church and he'd get on his knees and call every one of our names. And then he'd ask the Lord, if you see my children walking in a way that I didn't raise them, Catch them by the reins of their mind and turn them around before it'll be a day and a time too late. And then he say, mark death and judgment across their path and bid them no further to go that way. Every time I get ready to do wrong, even now, I hear my daddy say, mark death and judgment across his path. And I said to him, I said, how come you got to put that in the prayer? I mean, I ain't trying to kill nobody. Nothing like that. I'm just, you know, 
no good. But I'm going to straighten up here in a minute. But I feel their prayers pushing me forward. And that's what the prayers of grandparents will do for their grandchildren. You want them to do right? You just start praying for them. And correcting them and showing them from the wisdom of your years. God keep me alive to put in them what somebody put in me.